we're going to talk about how to use Eclipse to help you write classes. Now, it's important that you understand how to write a class and what components are involved in designing a class. But once you've thought those things through, Eclipse has, has some shortcuts that let you do a lot of that very easily. And in fact, it'll do a lot of it for you. So the class we're going to write is a car class. So it's going to define the blueprint for all the car objects we'll create. Now there's lots of different ways we can write a car class. For our purposes, the state of that class is gonna be the make, model, and year of the car, and then we'll also have a state entry for the speed. And that's actually how we'll use the class. We'll update the speed by applying the brake or accelerating. So in Eclipse, I'm going to create a new class. So I'll say new class and we'll call that car. And so you'll notice I get an empty class. Now, the first thing I need to do is define my fields, the state of the object. So the make will be a string. The model will be a string. And the year, I'll make that an int. And then for speed, the speed is gonna be a number. And the question is how precise do we wanna be? Just to make it interesting and so that we can be more precise with the speed, I'll make the speed a double. And so now I have the state of my object defined. These four fields will be used to store the state of each car object. So now Eclipse is going to allow me to build the rest of my class, or at least a significant portion of it, automatically. Because I've defined these four fields, if I go to source, generate constructor using fields, it gives me the option to select which fields do I want to be made in the constructor, and then I can generate. Now, you wanna be careful and not just take the defaults. When I'm creating a car object, the car is not going to have an initial speed because I haven't accelerated or decelerated or anything with the speed yet. So I'm actually going to uncheck the speed so that the speed isn't part of the constructor. Now, we wanna initialize the speed and this speed will define to be 0, 0.0. So a couple things about the constructor that it made. Notice by default it calls super. Super is the constructor for the parent class. That's something we'll talk about when we get to inheritance. It doesn't really make a difference in this case if we have that or not, but when Eclipse generates this for you, it will add that. And that's usually a good thing to have, so I'll leave that there. And then you'll notice Another thing Eclipse does, the parameters are make, model, and year, which are the same name as my fields. So it uses the this reference, which is a special reference to the current object. This says the current object's make field is equal to make, which is this parameter. If I didn't have this here, then the make name would refer to this parameter because these actually shadow the fields. In general, doing something like this is bad practice. However, when you're creating a constructor and also for mutator methods or setters methods, those are clear enough what's going on that I think it's okay to have the parameter name the same as the field name because usually those are short and it's pretty clear what's going on. But in general, you wanna avoid using parameters that have the same name as the fields. So now I have a car object that has a constructor. I can also add getters and setters, and you'll notice it gives me the option for each field I have. Now, you don't always want to have a getter and setter for every field. For example, the make and the model are always going to stay the same for any object. Once that car is created, it has a make and it has a model. So I'm only going to have a getter for those, not a setter. Those are set in the constructor, and those are permanent and they don't change. The same holds true for the year. When a car is created, it has a model year, that model year isn't going to change. So deciding how you want to do getters and setters is an important design consideration with your class. You want to think about really what do I want to change and not change. Now speed is going to change. Maybe I do want to allow you to set the speed and then of course we want to get her so that we can get the current speed. So once I'm done with this, I can say generate, and now notice I have the getters and setters that I've created. And these are also called accessor mutator methods. 
getters access some value, mutators update or change some value. Now we also talked about some behavior. So the question is, what should this apply break method do? And I think what we'll do in this case is we'll take a double and that double will be the speed reduction we're looking for. And this is a void method. This should reduce the speed by reduction. So we'll say set speed, get speed minus reduction. And so what this does is it gets the current speed, subtracts the amount we want to reduce the speed by, and then sets the speed to that. One thing we want to be careful of is you can't apply the brake to go backwards. The smallest speed you can get by applying the brake is zero. So I think we probably want to put an if here that says if reduction is greater than the current speed, then we want to set speed to zero. And then otherwise, we'll set the speed like we discussed previously. So this makes sure that we don't apply the brakes and eventually wind up with a speed of negative 100 miles an hour or something like that. So our other piece of behavior was accelerate. And so we'll take a double, that'll be the amount that we increase the speed by. And here we'll just set the speed to get speed plus whatever that increase is. So this will update the state of the, ob of the car object based on how much we either apply the brake or accelerate. And to make sure we are able to print this string in our driver class once we create one, if we go to source and we say generate to string, this gives us the option of what fields we want to include. When I generate a string that represents this car object, I'm going to leave off the speed and then I'll say generate. And so this gives me a default string. Now this particular string, I'm not really sure I like, I think a better way to do that would be say like a 1972 Ford Mustang or something. But for now we'll leave this since this is the default, just keep in mind that this isn't set in stone. You can change this to meet whatever criteria you're looking for. And so, this gives us a complete car class that we can use anytime we need to represent a car in our code.